Good evening, boxing fans. I'm making the assumption you did not see the fight, or maybe you did, but chances are you probably didn't see the fight. This is Crawford versus Porter that I'm referring to. I just finished watching the fight. The thumbnail should have told you what the outcome was, which was that Terrence Bud Crawford did manage to get it done and take out a very game, very rough, very tough Sean Porter. And listen, I'm going to put this in my words as far as what I saw. I saw Sean Porter give Crawford everything he can handle all the way up to round six. I gave Crawford round two because I felt like Crawford did just enough to beat that one. But other than that, I gave Porter one three, four, five, and six from my perspective. And then I saw Crawford come on strong rounds seven and eight and then nine. For whatever reason, other people had it backwards. They 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 thought Crawford was ahead from the beginning, but they gave Porter more rounds. And then seven, eight, and nine, they're given to Porter. And I'm like, no, that's backwards. It's clear. It, seven was seven and eight and nine were clear Terrence Crawford rounds. Round two, I thought was a toss-up. Round six, I thought was a toss-up. Other than that, seven, eight, and nine, clear Terrence Crawford rounds. When round 10 comes, here's the story of this fight. Crawford figures out that he's able to nail Porter right to the, basically right to the solar plexus as he's coming in and uh, as a counter. And he's repeatedly able to do this. Kenny Porter's telling Sean to basically pivot to the left. Sean doesn't consistently do that. He does at times, but he's not consistent with it. And then the times he did do it, of course, Crawford's one of the best as far as cutting off the ring and nullifying that. So I think Porter's earlier strategy was sound, which was high aggression, high impact, getting inside, roughhousing. He abandoned that roughly around round six-ish. Porter's still landing quality shots, but he abandoned the strategy that was working for him. And the reason that he's doing this is because he's getting caught when he comes in now. But it's like he's not able to adjust yay or nay. And if anybody remembers um, Mayweather versus Hatton, a, a similar situation happens here where Crawford basically runs Porter into the turnbuckle. Porter doesn't go down, but it was very similar. Brent brought flashbacks and made me think, it was the same type of thing as far as Mayweather and Hatton where, you know, Mayweather's kind of playing the matador role and then Hatton's the constant come forward aggressor. It was very similar, the, the fight cadence. I'll tell you this though, Porter made a strong showing of himself. He has nothing to be ashamed of with his general performance. Um, ultimately, Crawford got it done and the stoppage that happened, which was in round 10, Porter gets knocked down, legit shot, it's a body shot. And he gets up and he's ready to go, just like he always is. He tries to come in again, gets hit, caught with the same shot again off of a, a exchange, goes down. You can see Porter's frustrated. You can see it. And then as he turns around, he's telling the ref he's ready to go. Kenny Porter's already up on the ring holding the white towel. Kenny Porter, maybe don't know this, but Kenny Porter had told Sean, it's like, if I see that it's just not happening and you're just getting dropped multiple times, I'm going to stop a fight. As long as you're winning, you ain't got nothing to worry about. As long as I see your head, you got nothing to worry about. So this was a chess match from my perspective all the way through round nine. Arguably a chess match where it could have gone either way. I had Porter up by one round going through round six. So basically I gave Crawford one round of that one. And then round seven I gave to Crawford. Eight I gave to Crawford. Nine I gave to Crawford. And then of course ten is a ten-seven round. So... Terrence Crawford got it done. He was, I wouldn't say he was exceptional, but he was good in his performance against a very game, very solid Sean Porter who showed he's top quality. He, did, he didn't go in there to lay down. He didn't go in there to quit. And frankly, he wasn't even hurt off the two times he got dropped. He was more frustrated because he lost his composure. The composure is why he was winning rounds. But because, you know, Crawford, I say roughly around round five starting, all the way through, started clinching more, which I think started to frustrate Porter. Broner tried to clinch too, but he wasn't able to pull it off like Crawford did. I believe that the, cr the clinching really got under Porter's skin because he wasn't able to engage like he wanted to, and he wasn't able to entice Crawford into wars like he did early on. Early on, 
Crawford was starting to fight Porter's fight, and he was getting clipped like mad. In fact, there was one point in the fight where it seemed like Crawford slowed down ever briefly, and he was like briefly wobbled off of one of these exchanges. And then there were headbutts and the whole nine we expected to see. But then Crawford, you know, Bomax screaming at him, hey, go back to boxing. And when Crawford does go back to box, finds that right hand, you know, that shot to the body, then all the, the whole scope of the fight changes because he's able to land that pretty much at will. Anytime Sean comes in and Sean never adjusted to it to either get out of the way of it or deflect it on the way in. Like I, I called out uh, Teofimo versus Lomachenko where Loma, he had deflected a shot coming in. It was a similar strategy I was expecting from Sean that he didn't do. And it may simply be that Sean didn't expect Crawford to keep using that punch. I'm not sure because he kept falling for it over and over. And I do think he struggled with the southpaw stance. In any event, it's kudos to Terrence Crawford for doing what nobody has been able to do. That's number one. Stop Sean Porter. Nobody has come close to stopping Sean Porter. He's been dropped before, but nobody's come close to stopping him, even though it was Kenny Porter that did it. The point is it's a legit stoppage. It wasn't like a nonsense ref stoppage as we've seen in his previous fights. It's a prime fighter in Sean Porter. He's at his prime peak, and even now... He showed me that he's tough and he showed me that he's legit and he showed me that he is able to take the best in the division to their maximum limits. Even if he loses, they're going to show their, their gaps in their performance. And Crawford showed gaps in his performance by far. Crawford was getting caught with shots he should not have been getting caught with upstairs, right hands that he should not have been able to get hit with, body shots that he should not have been able to take. And then inside, you know, inside he was losing the exchange every single time except for round, you know, later rounds. So Sean has nothing to be ashamed of. I think he let it get to him. I think he got, he lost his composure, which is ironic because that was the story from his side leading up to the fight was that he'll take Crawford out of his element. He did early, but Crawford got his composure back. And then Sean lost his composure and then the stoppage happens. Now I say all this and I'm going to give my statement and I'm adamant about it. Just like I said before the fight, just like I said leading in, this guy, Terrence Crawford, he is not a pound for pound fighter. He certainly is not number one. If you want to have him number 10, I'll, uh, sure, I'll give you that one. If you want, you know, 10, 9, 8, sure, whatever. I didn't see a pound for pound performance because when I watched Sean fight, he, he played a very methodical role in his strategy and he, you could tell he was thinking he was not just acting and he was planned and he was strategic and he was brilliant. I thought as a fighter and threw Crawford off at various points in the fight, but I couldn't help thinking it's like, if, if this was the version of Floyd Mayweather that fought Ricky Hatton, that was in the ring across from Sean Porter, Floyd would not have been missing the shots that Crawford was missing. Floyd would not have been drawn into those exchanges like Crawford was. Floyd would not have been caught to the body like Crawford was. Floyd might have eaten a headbutt, but he certainly wouldn't have eaten two of them. Floyd would not have taken that many rounds to convince judges that he's the superior fighter because basically it took six rounds, actually seven officially, before you could make a case that one guy's ahead of the other. Well, that shouldn't happen if you're a pound-for-pound -pound fighter. You shouldn't have it square even leading into the sixth round. This is a guy in Floyd Mayweather. He got rocked in, I believe it was round two against Shane Mosley, but the rest of it was a wash. He just dominated a very game Shane Mosley. That's the kind of performance I would expect from a pound for pound fighter. Or let's even look at Manny Pacquiao. When Manny Pacquiao fought Tim Bradley in the third fight, he made, he convinced the world. Okay. Bradley wins like three or four rounds early. Other than that, he convinces the world it's like there's levels to this. I didn't see that from this performance because of who was across from him in the ring, number one. Number two, it's not like Sean was hurt. He wasn't hurt. He was more sloppy. He lost his composure, and he started making mistakes, and he was getting caught, but he wasn't hurt. So, again, it was a swarming type of deal, and then his dad ultimately stopped the fight as we expected. It wasn't like... He was forced to take a knee or that he quit himself or that the ref said, you know what, this is just too much damage. He was still game. And in fact, he would have kept on going. I know he would have, and he might've made the bell and who knows what might've happened in round 11, 
but I didn't see at any point he was really hurt. I didn't see at any point that he could not have continued. That doesn't take away from the win. I'm simply saying that I saw no pound for pound performance from the guy. I saw Crawford. I saw a good performance. I've always called him a good fighter. I recognize he was a good fighter since I saw the Ricky Burns fight. I saw quality in this guy. What I wanted, what I always wanted, was to see him fight somebody who was in their prime. He just did that. I wanted to see him get a legit stoppage, not a nonsense ref stoppage. He just did that. I wanted to see him tested under fire. He just did that. He arguably did not pass the test for me because, again, I had Porter arguably up leading into round seven. That tells me that he was not able to deal with the offense for that long, and then it was really Sean's mistakes that cost him the fight versus anything Crawford did. Like, Crawford didn't really do anything extraordinary. It was more about Sean's making mistakes and getting frustrated and losing composure than Crawford doing this magical performance. I certainly didn't see it. And he missed more upstairs than he did downstairs. No problem. Sometimes that's the case, but... He took so long to actually adjust to going to body. He was so much head hunting early on. It looked bad. I, I think to the judges, if you look at the scorecard, they probably would have had Sean Porter winning six rounds out of 10. So I'm just saying I didn't see a pound for pound quality performance. It's not to dismiss the fact that Crawford clearly won against a prime opponent who was game, who was dangerous and who gave him all he could handle. And yes, he got done what no other fighter could do. And he was able to do what Errol Spence couldn't do. But I didn't see a pound-for-pound pound quality performance out of this guy at all. I saw a good performance from a good fighter. And I've always called him a good fighter. I will always call him a good fighter. I just think that he needed to have some tests like this to simply showcase, hey, look, I can beat somebody who's not washed. I can beat somebody who's not damaged. I can beat somebody who's not ill. Now, Porter recovered from COVID. We don't know what effect that had. It didn't look like it had much effect on him. So I don't call that. I'm saying I didn't see anything of this win that should taint it in any way. It was a good quality win, and I give him all the credit in the world, but not pound for pound. We should stop calling pound for pound on performances like this where he's getting outboxed the vast majority of the fight. This is now you know, Kel Brook won every round against him. Sean Porter arguably took six rounds, I'd say five minimum, off this guy. Amir Khan was jabbing the hell out of him, okay? You know, Jose Benavides, you could argue he won four rounds minimum. Like, if I just look at Kell Brook alone, and then I look at Sean Porter, he's increasingly getting outboxed by guys. Pound-for-pound pound fighters are not getting outboxed, right? In my perception, they're not getting outboxed. So I don't call... Crawford pound for pound, just like I don't call Spence pound for pound for the same reason. You know, there's he lose, he, he'll drop five rounds or something. So I can't call these guys pound for pound. Canelo is pound for pound because he is going out there and he is dominant each and every time he does it. it imagine Canelo in the ring against Sean Porter. Sean Porter would probably never land a shot on Canelo Alvarez because Canelo Alvarez is not going to play that. And he's not going to, and, and his counter uppercut is likely to shatter your face as Billy Joe Saunders found out. So that is a, that would be a pound for pound quality performance that I would expect is from a Canelo Alvarez. What I saw here was a very good, very solid, very legit performance from a very good, very solid, very legitimate fighter in Terrence Crawford. And I've always legitimized him as a fighter. What I said was, I need. I certainly didn't see this 50-50 split for Errol Spence. I see that now. Now I can justify a 50-50 split because he did something Spence couldn't do. So now the narrative has changed, right? But I, before this, you know, when he's getting outboxed by Kell Brook, no, I can't justify a 50-50. I think 70-30 is fair because he hadn't done anything to justify 50-50. Now I see 50-50, but then I'm concerned. Because if Terrence Crawford fights Errol Spence, at least the version of Crawford that I saw, and I know people say, well, he adapts to who's in front of you. He didn't adapt to Sean Porter. Sean Porter lost. Crawford didn't win. There's a difference. Sean Porter made a critical mistake at the critical hour, very similar to what he did against Adrian Broner, where he just at one point lost focus. Whether he got overconfident or whatever, I don't know the reason, but it seemed like he lost that focus, that laser focus he had early on. 
and started making silly mistakes, and that's what ultimately cost him the fight. Crawford didn't do anything any different than what he had been doing for the past four rounds prior to that. So I didn't see this narrative that Crawford was a significantly better fighter. I saw that Porter made silly mistakes and cost himself the fight. I don't see Sean uh, Errol Spence making anywhere near the same kind of mistakes that Sean Porter made because Errol Spence, of course, is not going to be lunging in that way because he doesn't need to. And the way that Spence fights is nowhere close to Porter, where Porter's giving up what I think it was a five-inch reach advantage off Crawford, and so he's hard. it's hard for him to get in there, and he's fighting a southpaw. Errol Spence, I believe, is a southpaw, and even if he's not, it doesn't matter because Errol Spence, is, he has reach similar to Crawford. So I don't see the same outcome from my perspective. I will say this, and I'll wrap up. I'm very impressed with Terrence Crawford for doing what nobody else has done, what Danny Swift couldn't do, what Keith Thurman couldn't do, what Errol Spence, uh, Errol Spence couldn't do, Broner couldn't do, Granados couldn't do. I'm very impressed with that. I don't, at this moment, from that fight performance, see that he beats Errol Spence. I don't see it. I see that Errol Spence beats him in a decision, likely a very close decision, but still a decision. I don't see a knockout. I don't even see either guy getting dropped, really. Or if somebody gets dropped, I see Crawford possibly getting caught with something and dropped because Errol Spence is obviously stronger than Sean Porter. But I don't see from the performance that Crawford beats Spence. However, should that fight get booked and Spence is on record saying, look, if you can get past whoever beat, whoever wins this, I want them next. Spence said that. If I don't get Ugas, I want whoever wins this next. That would be Terrence Crawford. Now it's up to Bob Arum and PBC to make, or TGB promotion specifically to make it work. If that fight happens for unification and we see Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford, two undefeated fighters, still at least at the at the peak of their careers, even though they're not really prime. Crawford's certainly not prime. There's a decline you can see from him in this fight. But they're at least at the peak of their careers, and we see that fight happen. If Crawford can take out Errol Spence, the way he was able to take out Sean Porter, then I will acknowledge him rightfully as the top guy in the division because then he will have beaten the current top guy in the division. But Errol Spence is still the top guy in the division because he's, number one, unified the championships. Number two, he holds wins over Porter and Danny Swift, who were, you know, with Danny Swift, he was a top five welterweight when he fought Errol Spence. Sean Porter, top five welterweight even now. Kell Brook was a top five when Spence beat him. He was not ranked at all when Crawford beat him. So I can't count Crawford's. I can count Spence's. And then for bizarre reasons, people consider Mikey Garcia a top five welterweight, even though he's not even a welterweight. Spence washes him. I have to count that win. Spence has four top five welterweight wins. Crawford now has one. I don't, I don't see it equal, but because it was Sean Porter, I'm willing to acknowledge now I see a level playing field with Crawford and Spence from a performance perspective because Crawford was able to do what nobody else could do. And that makes the fight now compelling and worth seeing. I still don't see enough of the performance to justify in my mind that Crawford's number one. He would have to dominate Spence in similar fashion to convince me of that. If he's able to do that, good. I will celebrate it. I still won't call him a pound for pound fighter because again, there's something about pound for pound and the performance has to play a part of it. And his performances, I don't see it. His outcomes are fine. He gets it done and he's a finisher, but I think the totality of performance matters. When I look at Floyd Mayweather and I, I gave Manny four rounds tops uh, in the fight against Floyd Mayweather. And you're able to do that to Manny Pacquiao. You are a pound for pound fighter. And Floyd made it look easy at times. Same with Mosley, same with Hatton, same with Ortiz, same with Canelo, same with Guerrero, same with Berto. When you make that look easy, you're not getting out box for six rounds. I can call you a pound for pound fighter. But we're talking at the top of the class too, a Manny Pacquiao level. Crawford hasn't, this is the first time he's had to do it. And he got out box for minimum five rounds. So, Okay. I see that you're a quality fighter. You're a good fighter. You're a sound fighter. You're a legit fighter. You are not a pound for pound fighter. That's all I would say of it. 
even if you're in front of my face, but he doesn't talk to people who are critical of him. I'm not critical of him. I'm critical of the pound for pound moniker because I don't see it in his performances, especially here because this was more about Sean Porter making a mistake than anything Crawford did. And arguably had Sean not made the mistakes he was making, I think Crawford was en route to taking his first loss by decision. 